asking is. Ah, uh, okay. So let's see what's in this patch. Worlds vex earth. Earth. So I don't know what worlds means. That that that's nothing new for us. Worlds vex and earth. Vex is new. Earth is not new. But wait, there's more. Can you believe we're just two weeks out from Worlds 2021? I actually didn't know that. Holy shit. I hope it's at a reasonable time now. Where is it being done? Please don't say China again. I thought it was China. Please no, is it? I don't know. I hope not. I actually want to watch it. We've got the I wanted to be in New York. Out. Yeah, me too. We've got the second and final round of Worlds Focus Champion Buffs and Nerfs, plus new Dawn and Nightbringer skins. And Wells 2021 Jarvan 4 to celebrate. The Exemplar? The Exemplar. The guy who needs a fucking update. Worlds Clash is also getting into the world spirit with some special Worlds themed loot. How many times am I going to say Worlds? Oh, did I mention Worlds is coming up? Oh, Jesus Christ. A lot of Worlds. Oh, yeah. Vex is also begrudgingly making her way to the Rift this week. Thank God. Don't get too excited, though. She hates that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love Vex. We're rotating game modes, Earth returns for some more good old chaotic fun. Thank God, a fun game mode. We've also introduced changes to behavioral systems and a few tweaks to the client. Did you hear they're actually releasing a uh, like an all-in-one client now? What do you mean? Oh, for all their games? Yeah. That's good. I've never played Valorant. I don't think it's going to make me play it, though. Nice. What about for the MOBA? Or the MMO, I mean? That'd be good. You just hop into the same client. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, patch highlights, cool. Vex, have you seen what she does? Yeah. Do you understand what she does? For the most part, yeah. Do you like what she does? She seems interesting enough. She's a mid laner, right? Yeah. And yeah. final question, do you think she's gonna go to the bot lane? I can see it. Okay. Okay. So. Is that good or bad? Listen, at this point, I think it's good. ADs are like, whatever. Bro, did you see the clip I put in with uh, Tyler1 and Draven? With Tom Kenz? Yeah. I just want to say, Tom Kenz is one of the craziest characters in this game. But Elijah, he autoed him over 30 times. And at the end, he he healed for more damage than Draven did. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Just imagine that. An AD autoing you 30 times, and you end out healthier. And Draven. No, obviously the Draven was building stupid, but either way. Ba back to Vex. against Tom. Tom and, is so nuts. I guess, but still. Against Vex. Or with Vex now. So, I think Vex is super simple. I think the most complicated part about her is her passive and basically nothing else. And it seems like she's pretty good. And she has a lot of playmaking with her ult and mass group mm -hmm. fear. And she has resets, so she's going to inherently be good. Anyone with resets is inherently good. I like how she says, fuck you, the champion, so I have dashes. Yeah, yeah, so... So, overall, I really like her. I'm super excited for her. I love her look. I love the pictures online of her. I love oh my everything God. about her. I think she's a great champion. I think she's a pretty decent, like, 8 out of 10 champion. I hope after this we're getting the AD. I, like, I really hope there's no, like, rework or anything. I hope it's the AD. Cause the next you just got Akshan, bro. That's not an AD. Enough with the AD carries. The next thing I think we're getting, though, probably is going to be the Udyr rework. A jungler? They said that's going to come, so... I'm not looking Watch it be that. just like the Mundo rework. Yeah. Where it's just the same character. Yeah, honestly. Like, bro, they're gonna make us wait a whole year for the. <laughs> but anyway, that's Vex. Super good. Solid 8 out of 10. Creativity, colors, everything great. Mm -hmm. Aatrox. I I've love been Aatrox. seeing a decent amount of Aatrox more. I don't think he's strong yet, especially with all the recent buffs to anti heal. They really went overboard with the anti heal. So. Mm -hmm. That's kind I of Aatrox's like whole thing now. He's a good character if you're good. Uh, yeah, he's definitely skill reliant. So, yeah, he's a skill champion. I like that about him. I think he's skilled. He's fun. I think currently, unless they buff Riven even more, he's kind of still the better <clears throat> Riven. Excuse me. But overall, 
I think he's all right. I don't think he's too weak. I don't think he's too strong. I think he's kind of in the middle. Yeah, so. I think he's in the all right place as well. Just because of all the anti heal. If there wasn't mm -hmm. as much anti heal, he'd be a lot better. But let's you see. Yeah, one anti heal item, and he's like a fucking a cannon minion. Yeah. So let's see. Aatrox W cooldown was heavily nerfed in patch 9.9, .9, and we're in 11.19. So we're what? Almost three years after. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why they're addressing this now. <laughs> So he's, yeah, it's been three years since he's been seen in the pro scene, I guess. So now we're going to buff him again. So instead of the W cooldown being 26 seconds, it's going to 20. That's a pretty big buff. Is it crazy though? No. Because you can he's not He's not played um, that much on Worlds anymore? I don't think so. I haven't or in, kept in up with pro him. I don't, I don't think so. But, I mean, it's a pretty big, like, six seconds shaved off is big. But you can literally mm -hmm. walk out of it if you have boots, so... Yeah. Like, you have to combo into it to keep them in there anyway, and for that, you have to be good. It's just you could try more often, which is good, so... Pretty pretty decent buff, I guess. Not bad. But, let's keep going. So, Akali. Uh, I think Akali is probably gonna get nerfed again. Mm -hmm. Because that's all they do to her. And if they're not nerfing her, they're taking away mechanics. And I feel like she's not even that good anymore because I never see her played. And when she does get played, she sucks. So I don't think she's It's like good. she does nothing with her lead. Yeah, like they've taken away so much of her tools. It's like, like, bruh, like, what else are you going to do to this character? It's already different enough from the champion spotlight. And if that happens, it's like you've really neutered the character. But yeah, I'm expecting to either see a nerf or a mechanic taken away. So, uh, okay, I was wrong. They're, what are they saying? In a rare flip of events, even Ryan Ooh. knows this is crazy. Akali has some room for power at all levels of play. Okay, so they actually have finally accepted and taken responsibility for the fact that they've ruined her. Drifter into oblivion. Yes, we're taking this opportunity to make her missteps a more forgiving, but instead helps her subtly throughout her games. So her hot, oh, here we go. Her health regen goes up by 1, her health regen growth goes up by 0.4. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like these changes do these changes do absolutely nothing until they do them like 5 times. So like, I, I think this does nothing, I don't even know how this helps her besides she regens more. But no one's maybe, regening- Maybe we're, we're on the path to buffs. Yeah, no one's regening like, is important unless you're Mundo or you're Garen. Especially Garen, but no one else has like good regen, maybe set. Maybe set, but that's it. Those three characters, their regen matters. No one else's does. So this means nothing. Kogoth. I actually heard from Hunter. Now, I don't know the validity of this. Oh, but no. I heard from Hunter that Kogoth is really fucking good. So, going purely based off what Hunter said, he should be getting a nerf. I have no opinions on this champion. I think he's pretty straightforward, which means he has obvious counters. I don't he think he's like, that strong. Yeah, I, Every I time I see him, I feel like he just gets like his fucking head bashed in. Any person who's straightforward has winning matchups and has losing, match losing matchups. I, I take it the same way as Trinomir. Trinomir is straightforward. Excuse me. You can either kite him and win, or you don't kite him and you lose. Cho'Gath's a little bit more skill-reliant, but similar pool. So, again, according to Hunter, he should get nerfed, so let's see. Despite being terrifyingly tanky, Cho'Gath is still weak across the board. So Hunter's wrong. They're making the Q cooldown 7 to 6. I don't know if you build Cho'Gath tanky or hybrid, but if you get any cooldown at all, this Q cooldown is actually surprisingly low. Bro, the it's always thing, fucking up. It is only, always up. Yeah, the only thing that sucks, though, with the Q cooldown is it doesn't scale, which is both good and bad. But overall, I mean, it's a one-second buff. Cho'Gath's a little stronger. I think this changes nothing, though. I think Cho'Gath's the same. Yep. Fizz. Okay. I hate so, this character. What I think didn't he get... Wait, last time we were here, didn't he get buffs? I believe so. I think they were kind of stupid, though. But I think he okay. did get buffs. So, one of two things has happened. And I'm going to lean towards the first one, which they weren't enough. So we're going to get more buffs. Because, again, from what I remember, the buffs were stupid. So, I don't think we're going to get a nerf. But, like, when I see Fizz, he doesn't do good too often. 
Like, I don't feel scared anymore, but let's just see. Passive damage reduction against all basic attacks removed. I don't even know what I was there to begin with. W damage reduced, E cooldown decreased, late R damage increased. The 11.18 changes were an unintentional nerf to Fizz. The quote unquote buffs. We overestimated the passive and W buffs and underestimated the R nerf. Rather than trying to fine tune those, they're just getting it out of the fucking way because they know they can't do it. So this is them realizing they don't know how to buff champions because the buff they were supposed to give him ended up being a nerf. So nice. Riot's pretty good at balancing. But anyway, so no That's longer. That's the moral of the story. Yeah, no longer does he receive like six reduced damage from basics, which again I don't know why that was there in the beginning, but he still is ghosted, so that's good. Uh, the W damage is going down by ten base, which is fine. Uh, the E cooldown is going oh, down lovely. by two. That is lovely. huge. That is lovely. actually huge <laughs> because you build cooldown out the ass on this guy. And I would argue, aside from the ult, the E is the most important part of Fizz's kit. This Lovely. is actually fucking scary. Like, I hate this fucking playful trickster, bruh. Bruh, he is going to be dodging nonstop. This is actually fucking ridiculous. This is huge. And then R. I feel like the R has been weak for a while. I think they should buff this shit. Like, if you get a max range fish, that guy should fucking die. Unless he has Zanyas. But anyway, the guppy damage is up by 50, up by 10%. Chomper damage is up by 125 and 15%. And the Gigalodon da What the fuck is the Gigalodon? What? Are, what? The Gigalodon damage is up by 100 and then 20%. Yeah, so Fizz's R hurts now. It always should have. And the fact that it didn't is crazy. Fizz actually is like super crazy now. This is super good. We will see more Fizz play because of this. This is insane. Galio. I think Galio kind of sucks. I think he kind of sucks because he used to do damage. They took away all his damage. Then he supported. Then they took away his main way of engaging, which is Flash Taunt. And then he's been nothing. And they've slowly been buffing him. So I believe we're going to see another buff. So what do they do? Galio's nerf back in 11 and 10 turned out to be a bit too effective on his elite performance, so they're only using him in pro play. And they're gonna use anyone who has roam potential in pro play, like Galio does, TF2. So they are bringing him back with a full trickster. buff to his W by two seconds when it's maxed, which you max this last, so. You're not going to feel this until late game, and two seconds late game doesn't really matter, so this is... I mean, it helps, but this is like a whatever change. This is Wiener. Build of the round? Yeah. Grag ass. So... I've been seeing a lot more Gragas play recently. I have too. A lot in the jungle. I've seen it mid, ironically enough. Mid and some up top. Overall, I mean, we're seeing more of it, so maybe he's on his way to being good, but I think he sucks ass still. I think unless you're, like, a mechanical god and genius at, like, League, you don't play Gragas. But I'm pretty sure we're going to see buffs for this guy. W damage AP scaling increase. Gragas didn't benefit from the Predator change, so he's still pretty weak. The fact that he needs a Keystone to be powerful is stupid, but whatever. While helping his various AP builds, back more of a punch... So, how much is this? So, the base damage... Wait. I, I don't understand. Nothing... Nothing changed. Oh, the AP. scaling went up by 10%. Yeah. That's it? Alright. And it's on his W... Who gives the drunken rage, shit? Bruh, this shit is so ass. What a wiener change. Okay, Gwen. This champion is so crazy. So, on release, no one knew what to do with her, but she was way overtuned, and everyone knew it. And then they figured out, if you max, if you start E and you go Ignite, there's no, like, matchup, save for maybe Trend, that you lose level 1. And you could just level 1 the lane into victory. And her late game is absolutely mortifying. Like, she will cut you down faster than, like, 
I'm not going to say what I was about to say. But what, very what, fast. What? Very fast. She'll cut you snap, down snap, snap. very fast. Like, she does so much free percent health damage. It is ridiculous how much damage she does late. She's an excellent scaler. Like, it blows my mind. I think from the ult alone, when I calculated it, just the ulti's passive damage from your passive, not even the ulti's damage itself, will do 55% of your max health if you hit it all. Which is not hard to do. Like, it's actually crazy how much damage she does. But anyway. To get to her late game is a little hard. Her early game is definitely her weakest. And they nerfed the E, which was the main thing that was keeping her early game afloat. And after they nerfed that, I'm assuming she did really bad. So I'm assuming we're going to see some sort of buff here. Because I haven't seen her at all, and I feel like... Yeah, she's no a rare occurrence. Her. Even though I feel like her late game and mid game is super fucking good. If she doesn't get, like, fucked early, but... Maybe they're going to change her early. I expect, if anything, they're going to buff her early. So let's see. Gwen's E nerf in 11.15 was effective in snipping her overwhelming early lane power, which was the problem. Especially in pro, of course. Now, similar to Akali's situation, there's room to weave in some people to actually use her in actual play, except in pro. So what are they doing? Another useless change of health regen. Mm, it's like Akali. Okay, so this change is nothing. Cool. Kennen, they have been shadow buffing this guy for a while. They want Kennen to be used because Kennen is a really good Worlds champion. Lee Sin is the same thing. They've been slow buffing Lee Sin leading up to Worlds because people want to see him played. So Kennen's the same thing. He's Kennen fun. He's fun to watch. Rumble. Exactly. Him, Rumble, and Lee Sin are super fucking like fun champions to have in Worlds because it makes a good show. So they've been shadow buffing him for a while. I've have not seen a Kennen in god knows how long so i'm assuming we're gonna get another buff because if we're not seeing him in regular play i doubt they're using it in pro because regular play just tries to copy what the pros do or you have some yes. fuckhead one trick who like does what he thinks is good but i'm assuming we're gonna get a buff here so they're actually nerfing him wow Kennen's been on a dramatic rise in pro priority since our changes in 11 point uh 11.15 reducing his power by walking back on those changes slightly because they still want him to be played so the damage is going down by 10 and the ap scan is going down by five percent yeah it really is slightly this is like it'll do a little less poke damage okay Derek kaiser i think Derek kaiser is super weird he's feast I, or famine i feel like i feel like sometimes he's super fucking strong but I don't know why. Like, on paper, and sometimes when I play him, I feel like what? Like I'm doing nothing. And then some games, I feel like a fucking hulking animal, and I don't know where that happens, and I don't know what the difference is. Like, I don't know what makes him so strong. The passive is definitely one thing. Maybe the W. Like, I, I don't know. His ulti is basically just like getting someone out the of the fight, or just being able to like kill someone. Like, the stats on it are kind of negligible. But it's weird. I mean... It's so weird. Like, it's like you said, he's either feast or famine. And I don't know what makes the difference of what he does. But overall... I think Mordekaiser is also a good pick for worlds watching why, so I think they might buff him. <laughs> so let's see. Mordekaiser's bummed that he's been falling behind his peers. We don't want the god of metal to be the butt of the jokes. So we're buffing him for skilled players. And how are they doing that? They're buffing the E. 22, 21, 20, 19, 18. Damn, that's actually really good. They're Pretty shaving early. four seconds off the E early, and you max this second. So, not bad. Pretty decent change. Pretty decent change. The E is a long cooldown, and if you're in a ranged matchup, which in top lane you almost always are, you really need your E to do anything. And if you miss it, you kind of just like sit with your dick. Walk your away. Hand. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually really good. I like this change. Pretty good change. Poppy. So to ruin the surprise, I'm almost 100% positive she's going to get a buff because she's getting a skin next patch. And there's no other explanation I need. What are they doing? Uh, they're buffing her. So her passive, which is kind of useless, is going down by three seconds. And then one second later, two seconds mid. I mean, it's better, but 
her passive is the fact that it already has counterplay and other passives like Rakan don't, it's kind of unfair. Like Rakan gets a free shield, albeit it takes longer. Poppy has to work and it's for shittier. her shield. It is shittier, but Poppy has to work for her shield and the enemy can deny it from her. So it's like the biggest thing honestly is just that you have a ranged auto. Yeah, I was gonna say. Like that's the only part about the passive that I think is good with the cooldown. So I think this is pretty good. I mean, it helps, but it does probably nothing else. So, Wiener change. Oh my god, I don't even—I haven't even read this yet, and there's already a wall of text. So every time we read patterns, I feel like this character's in it. Yes, and I'll tell you why. Kiana is also one of the champions that is great for worlds. They love seeing her in worlds because she's a huge playmaker. Now, overall, I think Kiana's weak. I think she's super weak. When I see her, she does basically nothing aside from her ulti. And I feel like before, she used to have things aside from her ulti. Now she's just an ulti bot. So, I remember I was talking with Adrian about a change they did to Kiana, and Adrian said this is ruining the champion. Like, they did something that ruined the champion, so maybe this is probably them reverting it. And them explaining why, like, they think the nerf was justified, even though they're getting rid of it. So, let's see. EQ combo targeting on dashing targets, adjusted Q bonus damage against monsters increased. Okay, so they want jungle Kiana. Before 11.18, Kiana's EQ auto aim used to be undodgeable. We changed their EQ so that enemies could escape or flash away, which Adrian said was terrible. That version of the combo generously treated every enemy dash as an attempt to dodge Kiana's combo, and it turns out this isn't always the case. A dashing enemy might be headed towards the same direction or even the exact same location as Kiana's E. So in scenarios where the dashing enemy ends up still within Kiana's default attack range, she'll maintain her auto aim. So they're adjusting it. If the target of Kiana's EQ is still within Kiana's default attack range, so right on top of her, it will not be dodgeable. So they basically returned a portion of it being like an auto hit if you're right on top of them, which is how it should be anyway, but... This is just like them giving back some of her power. This honestly really changes nothing with the champion. Aside from like the mains don't complain as much. So this well, is a wiener Adrian. change. Yeah, this is a wiener change. She's not stronger or weaker the than butcher. she was before. The butcher. Renekton. So last I checked. They nerfed this guy. Renekton was a super big issue in pro and they nerfed him. <laughs> so because he's here, one of two things are happening. Either they didn't do well enough, which I don't know because I haven't watched pro play, or they're buffing him. And that's pretty obvious, you know, either they're nerfing or buffing him more. But if I had to choose one, I would say they have to buff him. I feel like Renekton just does nothing even before. Like I hope so, bro. Renekton always had a time limit. Before, he didn't even have a timer. Like Before, he was just like nothing with those nerfs they gave him. Now they might be giving the time limit back, so let's see. Uh, we s we overswung on Renekton's nerf last patch. We still believe reducing the stun on his Empowered W was a step in the right direction. Uh, of course, I'm pro-dominant, so we're improving its look and feel, and they're doing other shit. So his base health is going up by 15, which doesn't matter. His health growth is going up by a decent amount, which I guess matters later. But he's, getting, he's getting healthy, because I don't know. Whoa. And then his W. Empowered animation sped up by 13%. Self lockout is lowered for both for both normal and empowered. I honestly have no clue what this means. I feel like he's still the same. Like I feel like this does nothing. So. But you're in the sand. Hopefully he'll get another buff. Rise. He's a champion that because Faker uses them or uses him, I'm pretty sure they want to buff him. I can never see Rise not getting a buff. I feel like he's a cool champion to watch as well, because yeah. like no, like now he's as, he they made his kit so like fucking over like intricate and all this bullshit they have to do to make it work. Dude, he's literally just so Faker's it's like entertaining champion. to watch. Yeah, yeah, like no one else can do it, but when you see Faker do it, you're like, wow, I want to play Rise. And then you go into a rank game and lose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. but uh, yeah, I think there's no way Rise gets nerfed here. <laughs> Q's AP. Ratio reduced, E cooldown increased. I was wrong. Rise has risen above the Buff? other mid laners in most regions. Yeah, probably all the Asian ones. We're nerfing his overall output to ensure he doesn't completely dominate a world, so they don't want to give Faker oh. an auto. Win. So, Nerf. 
they're nerfing this by going 5%. Okay. And then the equivalent, which I think is pretty big, is going up by 0.5. Bruh. I feel like this is enough. I feel like this is, like, wiener. But if they do anything more, honestly, the E is the biggest change. Like, that, that's gonna hurt. Because if you mess with something as intricate as, like, E... Because people, like, Rise Mains have the E cooldown, like, memorized. They know exactly when to tap E, even though you're just gonna spam it anyway. But the Rise Mains are definitely gonna feel this one. The 0.5 seconds is decent. Yeah, because the E, like, makes your Q free. Yeah. But it's, like, it's, like, the whole, like, crux of his kit now. Like, you just spam E always. But, uh, overall... I thought E was useless before. It's so crazy. Yeah, the Overall, uh, Rise is a little worse, but I still think he's okay. In, in Faker's hands, of course. Okay, Sedge. Have you seen any Sedges, like, recently? Nope. No? I haven't either. I know they keep buffing her. She's another, like, team fight, like, world champion that they like, so... They're probably gonna buff her. Jumai has been a bit of a boy lately with slightly boosting Tons her of damage, damage and giving her more access to her Q. I'm scared for the days when Sedge can do damage, because she's fucking unkillable for the most part. Oh my god, I remember back in the day, like, the tank meta, bro. Like, she bruh. did so much damage. <laughs> Sejuani is just like stupid. I hope we don't see that again. So the Q down, uh, the cooldown on the Q, the Q down, is going down by two seconds early, which is pretty good. It's your main bread and butter. Although I think you're only really going to use it once per gank, so yeah. I don't think this changes too much, except for jungle clear. And then the damage is going up by ten. So this is a wiener change. Cool. Seraphine. Better Sona. The better Sona. I think Seraphine has the potential to be a world champion. This is going to be her first Worlds like that she's in, right? I think so, yeah. So Because she was the big fucking promo teaser for the Glass Worlds. Yeah, so I think... I hate this champion. <laughs> I think that Seraphine has the potential to be a world champion. So we're probably going to see a buff because Raya loves her and everyone else hates her. Except K-pop stands. So hopefully we're going to see a buff. Seraphine's been weak across the board. Yeah, since her release, she's been weak across the board. So we're giving her some more chances to make sick plays instead of just sitting backstage. Uh, yeah, because her scaling is really good, but she still sucks. So overall, her ult all is, so stupid. is going down by 20 <coughs> seconds. I think the ult is the strongest part of her kit. And having this yeah. go down is probably the most impactful change they can make to her. Aside from straight buffing numbers to her damage. So, decent change. Not bad. Fuck the champion. Scion. I think Scion is actually sleeper, like, really good. Like, really? I, I went against the Scion. And got, like, anal? As Nasus, no less. And it took me a while before I could deal with him. Oh and, like, goodness. I thought the Scion was building damage or something. And he wasn't. Health? He was building straight, like, you know, like, tank Scion. And he was doing so much damage. And I was like, bruh. Like, what happened? What did they do? So oh, I think to Scion, me, he feels weak. I feel like he just like falls off in team fights and stuff. Aside from like his ult, after his ult, like what do you do? You Q and they ignore you. Sion just gets ignored after his ult. So it's like, yes. I mean, you can't really make him relevant unless you buff his damage. So I'm assuming he's not relevant enough because no one plays Sion. But I still think he's actually really good. I think Sion's really fucking good. But no one else thinks that, so I think we're going to see a buff. And if they're going to buff anything, they have to buff damage. Like, what else can you buff on this guy? Scion isn't doing so hot right now, so we're carefully buffing his shield to help him lane more stably. I don't think laning is his problem, but let's see. His sh shield is going up by 10, and that's it. This is a wiener fucking chain. What is this? Like... Holy shit. Okay, Sona. So, Sona had the biggest identity problem before, or after Seraphine came out. And then they reworked her, and I'm gonna be honest, I think the rework did absolutely nothing. Like, I still think Seraphine is better if you're gonna play, like, one of the two. So, we have to see, like, another Sona buff. There's no way we don't get a Sona buff here, because I feel like she still sucks fucking ass. Yeah, after the huge fucking rework. Like, I really don't feel like it did anything. I don't even notice the difference of her cooldowns, like, honestly. Sona's songs have been a bit too powerful. I guess we're wrong. Oh, and skilled play. Never mind. 
In addition to a few bug fixes, we're nerfing her base defenses a bit. She's already like paper. What? Base armor reduced passive damage bug fix. Q can no longer target hidden enemies. That's ass. That is a really big like quote unquote bug fix. Power cord E bug fixed. And look, they're doing the same thing with Jin. Jin's called the Virtuoso, and they fix his bug fixes that are actually like nerfs. So they're doing the same oh, thing. Like together. whenever they call you a Virtuoso, expect like huge like quote unquote bug fixes exactly, to happen. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my god, Bruh, I don't know what their problem is, <clears throat> but someone needs to catch hands already. I agree. So base armor is going down by two. She's already super fucking squishy. Like I don't know why they would do this. Like she's gonna get poked out of lane so hard now. She's so bad. I don't. She's not good. But anyway. Powered cord damage increased by. They took away five damage. Just get, leave it. Oh my god. And then the Q. I think the biggest change of all can no longer target enemies. Sona's can't. Sona can't see. Huge. And then bug fix on the E. Tempo of slow no longer bypasses the target's slow reduction effects. No one used that one. No one used the empower E auto. They always use the empowered Q one. Like, I've used the Empower E one on accident. Nice. Like, no one uses this. They're bug... They're, ner they're nerfing something no one ever used, so... I mean, I guess I shouldn't complain if it's gone, but just leave it in at that point. The character's weak enough. Yeah, so... Pretty bad for Sona. Damn. Even more useless. Soraka. So, if I remember correctly, the last buff she got was a pretty huge one where it cleansed anti-heal? Right? Her ulti yeah, cleanse her ult, her ult cleanse anti heal. Which is huge. I don't know if she's strong off that though. I always thought Soraka, if you're a confident Soraka player, you can keep your team alive like crazy. Like it is it is really annoying. She's super annoying. Like there's so many lanes that would have lost to us if they did not have a Soraka. I agree. But anyway. I think if we're gonna see anything, we have to see a nerf. There's no way they're gonna buff her healing or damage or anything, because I feel like it's all fine. We have to see a nerf here. Soraka got a bit too powerful with her new ability to cleanse Grievous Wounds before applying her buffed ult's heal. We still think the strategy works to help her against heal reduction, which is true. I think that that is true. So we're just tapping down the numbers. So the R base heal is down by 20 early, 50 late. Honestly, that's fine, because you're only supposed to use it when your team's low, and if that's the case you get more healing out of it anyway so i think this is fair i think this is fine yeah keep keep the grievous wounds cleanse i feel like that was huge yeah and for them to just take it away next patch is like right again like what are you guys doing on the balance team bro <laughs> smoking but anyway silas i feel like silas kind of sucks ass there was a moment where he was good and he was used like crazy in pro play and worlds because he's a world's champion he's very flashy he's very like playmaking so I'm pretty sure we're going to see a buff. There's no way we don't see a nerf here. Or, there's no way we don't see a buff here. Our 11.15 nerfs to Sasa's Q and W restrained him more than intended. And they're giving some of it back. So base mana. Oh no, health regen. And base mana regen. This does nothing. This is stupid. Does Silas have like a lot of mana problems? Um, A little early. I feel like uh, you, you run out of mana like really quickly unless you start like corrupting. Okay, okay. So, decent change or useless change? Maybe a little decent. It definitely helps him a, a little bit early. Because I feel like, like I said, in the beginning, like, yeah, like, he scales like an animal. But early, it's like, dude, you have to, like, really, like, use your brain and decide when you're going to use your abilities. Because if you Ooh. spam them, you're, you're like a sitting duck in fucking lane. Ooh, okay, so, wiener decent. change. Wiener decent. buff. Varus. Okay, so I kind of already know what they're doing here, I believe. Oh, um, he's, he's too crazy. I think, personally, Varus is kind of ass. However... Everyone else? What I do they know, think? I know for a fact I'm in the minority on this one. Because yes. they've non-stop <laughs> been nerfing Varus, which is very shocking for me to see. I always expect the opposite. So... I believe Varus is going to keep getting nerfed until he's unplayable. But I never see anyone play this fuck. He's not good. I don't think he's that good. He's decent, don't get me wrong, but why would I've you play him? him when you could I've play seen him a few times and he's like a Q bot. 
That's all he does. Bro, I don't like what they did. They, they like, yo, I'm telling you, they're gonna do like the Quinn or like Graves treatment. They're just gonna eventually get him out of the bot lane and he's gonna become like a mid laner or something. Like, I, I actually prefer him as a mid laner though. I don't. I like his no. autos. Nah, fuck that. If, if they do, I hopefully hopefully they do make the transition and keep him a mid laner. I like him better when he was mid. Bruh, I feel like he and Ash are like very similar in that they can use their ultis aggressively, which is not true for many ADs. Maybe like Callista as well, but their like ultis can start fights. Him and Ash, and I I feel like I'm inching toward. I feel it inching towards he's leaving the bot lane, because. I have a feeling, like, I feel out all the ADs, and he does it. He's starting less and less to feel like an AD. So, we'll see what happens. But anyway, he's getting nerfed for sure. Let's see what they're doing. They're nerfing his Q. So, his Q is going up by two seconds late, and you max this first, so you're going to feel it first. Eh, I mean, it's okay. I think you get Q cooldown refunded if you actually hit it. So, this shouldn't be too bad if you're not being, like, a Q bot. I thought they fixed this shit too before. Like, this was a whole controversy back in the day with, like, Varus's Q being too stupid. So they made its cooldown super long if, like, you didn't have stacks on someone. Yeah, to so, try to stop him from being a bot. Yeah, so that should have fixed it, but I guess we're right back where we started, so. He's, yeah, 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 yeah. I would say, just keep nerfing him. Just get him out the bot lane already. If you're gonna do it, just do it now. But anyway, that's all the champion changes now we got earth coming back cool and now they're gonna explain their reasoning of why they banned some champions i'm assuming but we don't care and yumi's gonna be super nerfed in this so that's fine and what are they doing with shielding uh we nerf shielding only on champions ability shield ratios to make sure we don't miss new champions champion vgs and heftier patch changes we're nerfing all shields across all champions consistently just like they do for healing. So healing is gonna, I'm assuming, scale? Or just they stay there? I don't care. This is fucking Earth. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I don't know. Fuck Earth. I actually really Never like gonna play that it, though. I, I really like it. World's Clash. Uh, who cares? AFK penalties. Okay, this I actually want to read. So, they're adding even more AFK penalties tiers to take stronger <laughs> action against serial <laughs> AFKers. Thank you. Players who progress through AFK penalty tiers will now be subject to a new Q lockout penalty at higher tiers in addition to Q delays. Q delays reset if an AFK is detected during any of the five Q delayed games. These delays and lockouts apply to all Qs except for Clash and TFT. That's good. So penalties will roll out in NA and LAS this patch for initial testing and everywhere else next patch. So currently... If you AFK, you get a five minute Q delay for five games. Okay. Wait, do they mean in game though? Like in game AFKs or like in champion yeah, select? Yeah, I think, I think it's in game. Okay. So the first three times you do it are the exact same. And if you're AFKing for three games, in my opinion, you should get fucking banned. After three games, banned. Yeah, I'm surprised that they allow you to still play the game. Like if you AFK three games, in the games that you're being punished for AFKing from the previous, you should just get banned. Or if not banned, suspended. Like a week suspension, at least. But anyway. The new tiers include 15 minute queue delay for 5 games plus 24 hour queue lockout. Okay, so they are like soft locking you out. That's good. So tier 5, you get a 3 day lockout. Tier 6, you get a whole week. Tier 7, you get 2 weeks. Honestly, this is a step in the right direction, but I think it should be more harsh. Like, listen. I think I so, too. So. Like, okay, let's say your internet goes out. All right, fine. Like, you have a one game, like, like uh, grace period. Fine. But if your internet goes out twice, I think the punishment should be, like, okay. But if something happens a third time, you either need to get new fucking internet or not play games with people. Because, like, if you're doing that shit purposefully, after three, it should just be, like, yo... A week you're out like learn not to be a dickhead but again step in the right direction they just need to be more serious with it of course this is a free-to-play game and they want to make money so maybe that's influencing their decision yes so the lead client so they're updating the client da, 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 da. no one cares bug fixes no one cares there's a lot of them as always okay now let's go over the skins so I 
personally have always liked the Dawnbringer and Lightbringer events. I like how it's one of League's original skin lines that keeps coming back, uh, back each year. I very much like it. I like the theme. I like the colors. I like the lore. I like everything about it. I like light versus dark, you know? It's, it's cool. It's cool. Cool so, thematic. Cool thematic. So let's see specifics on the skins. Vex is a little weird. It's very different from her base skin. It's very, like, you know, light themed and she's dark. But uh, I guess that's what they're going for. They're going for Stark Opposite. Not a bad skin, but not the best. Dawnbringer Morg. I haven't seen the effects for this skin, but it looks beautiful. Like, I've seen an end game of Morgana, and she looks absolutely, like, gorgeous. Which brings me to my next complaint, which is with the Yone skin. The fact that this is a legendary is kind of sad, because it's it's okay, it's decent, like, it has flashy effects and stuff. But the thing Riot's doing with legendaries that face I don't like is... Face looks so crazy. Yeah, the face is fucking disgusting. Oh my god. <laughs> but the thing I don't like with the Yone legendary is, like, what is legendary about it? Okay, yeah, it has, like, flashy effects and stuff, but 1350s can have that too. The legendaries have to have some sort of gimmick, and I don't think this one has a gimmick. The weakest gimmick, in my opinion, is fucking the Grave skin, Sentinel Graves. The gimmick for that skin is once you, like, I think get ult, or, like, level up your ult, your abilities become less shadowy. And until I heard that, I never knew what the gimmick was. I thought he didn't have one, but it turns out he did. So maybe this is a similar situation where something really fucking tiny and wiener changes that I just don't know. But honestly, Riot, your legendary skins have gotten weaker, man. What's going on? What's going on with you? Then we got Nightbringer Trinomir. Eh, it's whatever. Lilia, I think, is probably the second best skin this patch. Like, this skin is fucking amazing. Nightbringer Lilia is super fucking cool, and it looks demented, and I like it. Nightbringer Kane is probably the best skin this patch. This skin is really fucking good, and I'm surprised this wasn't the legendary. But it's getting a prestige edition, so that's probably why. And then we have Worlds 2021 Jarvan, which is pretty decent all around. I thought it was Samsung Galaxy White, but it's Worlds, so there's that. The exemplar. And then we have Chromas. Overall, pretty whatever patch. It's mainly just focused on Worlds, so it's kind of boring. I didn't really think they changed too many good things. The biggest thing was Fizz, and that's about it. Overall, I'm going to give this one like a... I don't want to like what? read it based what, on the event, on? but I'm gonna give it like a. I'm gonna give it a six. I'm thinking like a five, but I was gonna give it a five, but Vex is coming out, so six. Yeah, I'll go with you then. I'll go with six because of X. Only because of X. Like the Vars, the gloomus. Just say he's a mid laner already. Just say he's a mid laner and be done with it. Fizz. Although it's not a change, I'm happy to see because I'm an AD player. I think it was needed. Fish, fish, fish. Everything else, world changes. Like, it's whatever. Yeah, I'm going to go with six just because of X. Fish, fish, fish. So, overall, that was it. Hopefully, we'll see you in two weeks. Hopefully, not. We, we don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't care. And then the new updates. Uh, six Mark Miles out of ten. Woo. Woohoo.